and we will now move on to Alberto Antoinetti, uh, who is here, and we will grab him on stage. Perfect. Okay. And Alberto, do you want to uh, unmute? Do you want to be on camera too, or no? Yeah. 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 I'm okay. There we go. It's working. Well, it was working. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Hi. Okay. Can you hear me well? Take it away. Yeah. Looks good. Perfect. So hi everyone. Let's start my timer. So um, welcome. I'm Alberto. I'm currently a postdoc at the Blue Brain project in APFL, uh, but the work uh, I will show you is from a, a previous position at the University of Pavia and Politecnico Milano, and I did it uh, with my um, great colleagues uh, that are here in, in their uh, natural environment, let's say. Um, so, um, and I would like to especially thank Eduardo who started this work during his uh, master thesis. So uh, aims of, of our work, um, we wanted to develop a spiky neural network model of the mouse uh, motor and sensory whisker system. So to give um, a tool, a network that can be uh, integrated with other models, um, especially to, to give um, to provide some inputs uh, that can be more realistic in the encoding, uh, in their encoding features. Um, then um, we uh, integrated this uh, this model in um, to control uh, a virtual robot. So we, we gave a body to this um, to the sensory whisker system, and finally we tested this whole system. We also add uh, a Cerebellar model as an example of, on how you can integrate this system uh, to, to create a virtual experiment. So the, the mouse whisker system is kind of complex. Um, we, uh, we, we can see that the whisker are organized in this, um, in this grid shape. Um, and the, um, also that there are uh, multiple muscles, multiple um, um, mechanocept different types of mechanoceptors uh, that uh, drives the uh, the whisking behavior uh, because whisking is uh, is very important for mice, uh, especially in the dark. They they use their whiskers to uh, to sense the, the surrounding, the environment, to locate objects, um, food or uh, dangers. And the um, uh, there are theories um, for uh, according to to which the um, it's possible to have um, a, an orthogonal encoding of a position, a 3D position of an object that is touched by the, the whiskers um, using the, um, as coordinates, uh, the, um, which whisker is, uh, uh, is activated, then the, the firing rate um, uh, of the uh, sensors, of the mechanoceptors for that, for that whisker, and also the spike latency. So, Putting together this free information, this um, it, it's possible to retrieve the position, the three D position of an object in uh, in the space. The um, of course the the whisker system is the the peripheral part, and then it's connected to uh, higher uh, higher order areas such as the thalamus, the barrel cortex, or the motor cortex too. Today we will focus on the peripheral part, so we start with the central pattern generator that uh, activates the facial nuclei, which um, excite the, the motor neurons uh, at the whisker part of the, of the mouse. Then the sensory part, the, the trigeminal ganglion, uh, the different cells, different population, which encodes different uh, aspects of the, uh, um, of the contact. Uh, and then uh, uh, a higher level, at a higher level, the trigeminal nuclei, and here we have the first feedback loop um, from the sensory to the to the motor uh, part, and then we have the the other areas that uh, are not covered today. Um, we implemented this this model, this spiky neural network model, with with Nest and Pine as as an interface. Um, and we uh, we developed this uh, small scale uh, network, so we we had a, a few hundreds of, of neurons uh, overall, uh, but we tried to to keep the the ratios between the, the population at, of neurons um, close to uh, what has uh, have been observed in uh, in uh, in experiments. Um, 
so we we have uh, the um, the body with the uh, muscles and sensors uh, which is then connected to the uh, ganglion cells uh, trigeminal nuclei and the fascia nuclei which um, again um, provide the, the input to the to the system uh, also with the central pattern generator giving the rhythmic activity we uh, that was the the brain uh, that we implemented the model of the brain we also have the model of the uh, of the mouse, so we um, we we work uh, using the neuro robotics platform of the Human Brain Project, and we modified one of the models that uh, are uh, already there. So we added these active whiskers, these four active whiskers, um, at, at at two at the left and two in the uh, right part of the um, of the mouse nose, and we tested this integrated. Um, integrated system. Um, we also added, as I was saying before, uh, a cerebellar model, a um, simple model to have the learning capabilities um, because we uh, took inspiration from this uh, experimental paper uh, where they uh, tested the, uh, the effect of cerebellum on, uh, on a learning task uh, which involved object localization uh, through whisking. So the, the protocol is kind of simple. The, um, the, the the mouse there is an object that is um, placed in, in the left or in the right um, whisking field of, of the mouse in in go trial it's placed on the left and the uh, there is a reward so the, the mouse lick and there there is um, uh, water as a reward uh, during no go trials uh, the the bar is is placed on the right uh, whisker field and there isn't a, a reward. So we wanted to do the same, try to do the same uh, protocol. Uh, looking at the result, uh, the, the spiking activity of the um, uh, facial nuclei, so we are here in the motor part. So these are the nuclei that under control of the central pattern generator uh, rhythmically uh, alternates uh, protraction and retraction. So these are the, um, the spikes that are then um, transformed into a, a, tor uh, a torque that is sent to the, um, the whiskers that then moves rhythmically uh, at a frequency around uh, 4 hertz, which is the, um, the natural frequency of, of whisking in, uh, in mice. And we have this for the uh, left and right. And you can see that for, for production, we have two different population that encodes um, the, um, uh, that provide the signal for the uh, upper or lower um, whisker, while for retraction, we have a unique population that retracts all the, the whiskers. For the sensory part, so we look at the trigeminal ganglion, where we have different populations uh, as in, uh, in, in biology. So we have the, the pressure cells, which uh, stays active during the contact of, of the whisker with uh, an object, the, the contact cells that are just activated at the moment of the contact, the detach at the, when the, the, the object is, uh, um, the, the whisker uh, leaves the, the object, and the whisking uh, cells, which encode the position of the, the angular position of the whisker. So if we look at the, at the single, um, at the single movement of the of the whiskers, we can uh, compare the uh, the firing rates. These are the the firing rates uh, experimentally uh, measured. These are our results. Uh, so the uh, qualitatively, we have the activation that is uh, correct uh, of the different neural populations. The uh, since we we have a very small network, uh, rather small, we we didn't want to. Uh, fine-tune it to match exactly the the firing rates we that that is something that for, of course can be can be done in in future works maybe with a with a, a bigger network um then the again the, the behavior that we wanted to um to model is the uh the fact that at the beginning uh, mice uh, starts leaking very frequently both during go and no go trials so the hit rate is do, is the correct leaks in go trials false alarms uh, leaks during no-go trials. And um, at the beginning, this uh, false, uh, false alarms is high and then it decreases uh, with, with the learning. Um, the, then let's see if uh, uh, the video uh, starts. No, okay, uh, because I have the laser pointer 
activated. Um, let's remove this. Okay. So uh, let, let's see if the video shows. Otherwise, I will put the, the link also in, uh, in the Discord channel. It's in YouTube. So just to give you a, a, any, uh, a, an idea of uh, how that looks like. So this is a video recorded from the Neurobotics platform. This is during free whisking. So the, the mouse is uh, able to, um, to move uh, rhythmically the, the whiskers. And there is a, this flickering uh, of, of, the, of the mouse is, is just a glitch of the Neurobotics platform, or maybe it's very, very cold there. Uh, in the behavioral trial, you can see that when the shelf is red, it's a no-go trial. When the shelf is green, it's a go trial. And then in early trials, we ha always have this response. So the, the leak is the um, mouse uh, rising uh, its head. Uh, so here we don't have the discrimination between left and right. Uh, in, um, in late trials, so when uh, we have the, the cerebellum uh, being activated and uh, um, learning the, um, the protocol, we can see that uh, during no-go trials, uh, we uh, don't have the response, uh, while in uh, go trials, there is the uh, uh, head, uh, head rise. Uh, but the, the video can be, uh, can be seen better, I believe, in, uh, in YouTube. So um, the preprint is on BioArchive. It's great to have the preprint initiative uh, at Neuromatch. So uh, I, um, I hope that you can uh, have a look at it and uh, comments are, are very welcome. Uh, the um, also data and codes are available uh, on GitHub. Uh, if you want to uh, see, see it, uh, try it, um, it, it will be, it will be great. I also uh, have this special uh, GitHub logo just for my, for my project. And um, closing, since we are talking about reproducibility, uh, fast advertisement, we are hosting a, a research, um, a special issue in frontiers in integrative neuroscience on reproducibility neuroscience. So this is open to all neuroscience field and uh, computational neuroscience is uh, a good a good candidate. So if you have um, um, a replication study or uh, with positive or negative results, uh, we um, it's it's good. The important thing is that is is rigorous uh, and it's it's sound. Uh, please um, have a look at it. Uh, I know that um, publishing fees can be a barrier, um, but um, please contact us. Uh, it's possible to have waivers uh, for for the fees and this uh, uh, we we don't want to have this as, as a limit to to accept your um, your submission so um, after this advertisement thank you thank you very much uh, Megan for uh, hosting this 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 session thank you Neuromatch for these uh, two two incredible days and everybody for listening uh, if you have comments well right now or later today uh, see you in, in Discord. Thank you again. Thank you very much. This was really interesting. Uh, and we have time for um, maybe one or two questions, and there's one already uh, in the Q&A box. So uh, Shreya Saxena is asking, how did you set or train the parameters of the feedback control component? Okay, so the... Um, um, well, the the first the um, we, we didn't as I, as I was mentioning um, uh, we didn't do a precise tuning. So we wanted to match the qualitatively the the behavior. So of course um, there are um, many parameters, free parameters in the network, the the weights, uh, the um, properties of the of the neurons that have not been. Uh, uh, tuned, but um, it, it's it's possible to do. What we what we did is to um, very uh, manually uh, see what we, what parameters were working, and uh, we were we were good with that. Uh, of course, uh, uh, fine tuning or an optimization is is always is always possible. And but yeah, uh, we we wanted to close the project <laughs> basically. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Um, well, if there, it looks like the other questions are um, about Nadine's talk from before. So um, 
Uh, oh, actually, this looks like a new question. Um, what are some of the most impactful ways you imagine this being used? Okay. Uh, the yeah. The the main idea is uh, to to have this tool to um, to be available to provide mainly to provide uh, a platform for virtual experiments. So if you, for instance, have uh, a model of the barrel cortex, uh, a model of the thalamus, and you want to um, test them in a, in an experiment because maybe you have just the behavioral data, you don't have the, the neural recordings, or maybe you use the neural recordings for, um, uh, for tuning the parameters of the model, and then you want to validate it with behavioral data, uh, then uh, our idea is that you can uh, use this model as, as a way to uh, create your virtual experiment that can have or cannot have the, the robot. It's not, uh, it's not mandatory, but also the, um, to have some inputs to, to your system that is more um, biological, let's say, or more realistic. So that, that, that's the main use that we uh, have in mind. Great, thank you. Uh, and that, Kyle was, that question was from uh, Kyle Johnson. So I think that's all the time we have for uh, this session. I wanna thank all three of our speakers again for the really excellent talks and fun discussion. And I'll remind everybody again that we have the Discord server for our asynchronous communication. So if you haven't joined it, please join and you can navigate very easily by hitting Apple K, Control K and just typing the name of the talk you wanna to go to and it'll take you there.